Good morning, my friends. Another real talk. It's not so sunny today, but we live in Canada, so we gotta deal with it. It's almost like England. It's a disaster. But uh, let's let's talk today a little bit about the players' roles and players' responsibilities. Um, as you all know, I used to be a, a soccer player, um, a professional soccer player, and a Canadian national team soccer player. So. I have a small idea on what it's like to be uh, a player on a team, an individual, and a player that represents your country. So the re responsibilities go uh, above and beyond rep soccer, house league, all-star, select, all of those things. When you're a professional soccer player, you're basically owned by the club and you're paid by the club to do a job, to perform at your best, to be respectful to the coaches and to listen at all times because if you don't there are punishments uh, as in fines or suspensions uh, separation from the team national team uh, huge responsibilities because now you're representing your country and um, you have a you have all eyes on you you cannot uh, mess around you cannot um, you can just you, you just can't you just can't do what you want. That's the whole thing. And this whole this whole topic right now is players coming and thinking they can just do what they want all the time. And when you when you get to a certain level, you just get punished for every every single thing. And that's talking from experience. That's not just talking because I want to talk. Uh, players nowadays. Um, they they think that they can just do what they want because their mom paid and their dad paid the fee for the academy and the coach um, just whatever they can just do whatever it makes no sense I see it year after year after year um, and the responsibility has to be from from the kid but also from the parent because there has to be a follow up where you know kids are acting a certain way. Coaches are telling them repeatedly, repeatedly, repeatedly on how to act, how to be, what to do, how to eat, how to sleep, how to train, all these things. It's teaching, teaching, teaching. You know, and then it comes a point where you see kids year after year and you see if they're actually developing, you see if they're actually listening, you see if they're actually being respectful. And a lot of coaches sometimes, actually not sometimes, most of the time, they don't really, they, they, we count on the kids to be accountable. We count on them. We look at them, we talk to them in the face, we say things, and then we just see them slipping up all the time. And that's not just because of anything else other than the accountability from the kid and the parent. Because the parents in this country are coddling, everyone knows that, this isn't this isn't a new thing. And yes, I said it, and yes, I'm going there. Um, because a lot of coaches, me and my friends, we've had enough of of trying to help and giving our best and giving our all and kids just not 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 respecting us and what I mean by respect listening at all times doing what the coach says not uh, judging any of the the players that are around you um, being accountable for everything not forgetting your shin pads not forgetting your material showing up on time saying hi to the coach when you arrive, saying bye to the coach when you arrive, saying bye to your teammates. I mean, these are all these are all things that it's not discipline. This is normal stuff. You know, you don't walk into your school teacher or your principal and don't say hi to them. You say hi to them. I would I would always say hi and that's because my parents and grandparents sh showed me certain ways how to be respectful all the time. Look eye to eye, look them in the eye. Hey, how are you? Good day. Oh, yeah, have a great day. Thank you so much. It doesn't happen anymore. I'm not talking because I'm talking. I'm talking from experience. I've been doing this for 12 years. There's kids that come into my academy that walk in, sit down, and they don't even look at me. They don't even talk to me. And then their training is a disaster because there has to be an in encounter in the beginning of, of humbleness and, um, and respect. So <clears throat> a lot of players need to, need to wake up. Because they say, oh, I want to be a professional, I want to be on the national team, I want to do this, I want to do that. But as we, the professionals and the national team players, are giving the advice and telling them how to be and giving our best opinions, 
it almost look, it almost seems like they act like we don't know what we're talking about or oh yeah well my dad's a lawyer or my dad's a construction worker or my mom's a real estate or this and that and all these things about mom and dad well they're not here right now they're not training it's me and you you're the one that wants to be you're the one that wants to go I'm teaching you I'm not teaching them so there's that type of um, wake-up call that needs to happen because like I said there are so many players that I've trained and you can just see it right away you know if if you have been there and you're trying to teach them and you see them and they're not acting accordingly and maybe they're acting accordingly that one day and then they fall back in because many reasons and that's just not acceptable if you want to go to that level because that's what everyone says oh even even if okay not even if you go to university you have to be there on time with training you have to also be successful in your grades or you won't pass I got thrown at me 11 full ride scholarships when I was 16 11 full ride scholarships and I had to deny every single one because that wasn't my path that wasn't the path that I wanted to go but at the same at the same point if I went to the universities I would have to do my grades and be on a, on a grade or else I wouldn't be able to get to to the, the, the team I, if I was at the team, I had to be on time. I had to be respectful to the coach, listen, be respectful to my teammates, and obviously do my job in training because when you are a player, the coach says, okay, I want you to play this position. These are your roles, etc., etc." And if you don't accomplish those roles or be successful in those roles, you're sitting in the bench. Now, who wants to be on the bench? Is that good enough for everyone? That's not good enough for me. I'm not wanting to be a bench player. I don't want my players to be bench players because Jenga Soccer is a development academy, a development program. We, we are trying to teach and, and, and make sure that these young players act accordingly. It's not a babysitting course where you come in, your mom's paying, your dad's paying, you just come in, you learn, and then next year you go somewhere else. Now that's coming from my voice. I'm not sitting here saying, Oh yeah, we'll just take anybody and oh, if you go to another academy next year. No, it's no, that's not how we do. It's not how I want things. I want longevity. Why? Because at Manchester United Academy, the player stays there for many years. Unless he's not doing his job and he's not being respectful and he's not keeping up. Then they release him. Perfect. So what's the difference here? Here it's uh, all the academies. There's a million of them around, uh, especially now. And, oh, the parent doesn't like how he's talking, oh, go somewhere else. Oh, the parent doesn't like that, he's on the bench, okay, go somewhere else. And that's become something that is unbelievable. Hopping, hopping, hopping. Yes, I said it. Hopping, 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 hopping. And I'm talking like this because it needs to happen. Someone needs to stand up and speak. And Mr. Jingo will be the guy. Why? I, I, have, I have the experience. 12 years running my academy, playing in, in leagues, all kinds, all kinds of games. Ontario Cups, I've played already. CAF, um, BMO Cup. My players have went to TFC. My players have went to academies in Toronto. But you know, you see, you see where they go after. You know, the ones that have been with me for a year and then they pop off to a, an academy in Toronto. I'm looking at them and I see their success later. And usually, it's a certain pathway and it's not a positive one. Then you see other players that have been with me for quite a long time and the pathway is, is quite quite positive. It's 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 just it's just there, it's there, it's what it is. Um and that's kind of it. I don't want to go off on, on craziness, but I think my opinion on making a little making little things more clear, it needs to be taken seriously. Kids that come to training and act however they want and do whatever they want and parents supporting that and not supporting the coach or the trainer, it's just not its just not acceptable because you wouldn't go to a classroom and, you know, the kid's acting up and then defend your kid over the teacher when the teacher's saying, this is how we act here and the kid's not acting accordingly. So now we have a parent problem. Because obviously there's a lot of biased parents out there that uh, only see their kids' point of views. And that's obviously not acceptable. Because 
um, just because you're paying or you've you've known the the coach for a long time it doesn't ma- it doesn't matter what matters is the coach lays down the rules he de- lays down um, what needs to happen and then the player or the kid is not following so if he's not following what do we do we te- we pull him aside and tell him many times i've done this many times i've warned kids i'm going to tell your parents if you don't start you know waking up i'm going to give you a f- another chance Hey, can I give you can I talk to you for a second? Yeah, why are you acting like that? I don't know. What do you mean you don't know? Okay, well, next time I'm going to talk to your parents. And, you know, as you all know, that saying, you know, what stays in what stays in the team doesn't leave the team. What happens in the change room doesn't leave the change room. I was a player. We were players usually don't go and say, "I'm going to tell your parents and tell on the kid right away." There's certain things you say, there's certain things you do, but we don't we're not there to go and every time there's a little mistake or every time there's a little problem, we go and tell the parent because many times that makes it worse because we want to create trust with the player. And when you go and tell the parent every, everything, you lose trust with the player because then that's when it all goes downhill. But anyways, that's a lot of talking. Just a little bit of venting making sure that people understand what's going on a little bit and uh players roles you need to be accountable responsible you want to you want to be a professional act professional especially if you have a professional coach or someone who's played professional i i i've played professional i've stood in front of uh crowds with a, with a canada jersey on singing old canada how do you think you got there by luck by my by my dad paying by my mom paying no Nope. From listening to the coach, following the coach. I remember there was a national team coach. Uh, I'm not going to say his name, but under 17 national team coach. And we were at practice. And my dad always taught me, always look at the coach. No, don't mess around, etc., etc. And <clears throat> the coach called all the players in because some players were messing around. And he called me, called us in, and I'm looking at him the whole time. And some players were looking down or looking around or whatever. And he goes, "You see, you lot." All of you need to be like Kevin. Look at Kevin. Every time I talk, he's looking at me in the face, looking at me in the eyes with respect. He wants to be here. So, at 16 years old, I was already acting like that and then 17, 18, 19, 20 to 28, professional uh, all the way until then and national team all the way until then. You know, it goes it goes a long way when you can look at your coach in the eye. He takes confidence out of that. and when you don't he's looking at you trying to see what's going on why is he not looking at me and that's all confusion there's a little bit of venting going on by me but i think all of this needs to be heard my last two videos there's been a lot of great feedback and i've been obviously reading the messages and seeing uh people's comments and i thank you so much and this is why i'm continuing to speak and uh i want to i want to help this is my this, this is my whole This is my whole view. When I came back from from Norway, I wanted to help kids become better. I wanted soccer to become better in Canada. I wanted to come to my KW region and help soccer uh, improve and become better. And uh, all I can do is my best. And I wanna I wanna say thank you to all the people that believe in me and that have believed in me, players, parents, and uh, I have respect for all of you. And I want to say thank you so much for listening. Have a great day. and keep training.